Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental rights to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney listens to all kinds of statements in the course of a day. Some are confessions from people who want to pay their debt to society and make a fresh start. But even a confession can be an attempt to outsmart the law. This case began more than 500 miles from my county in another state. How you know, Pete, the old dame didn't give you a phony combination? Oh, she wouldn't do that, would you, Grandma? Because the wrong combination would mean bruises. Wouldn't it, Grandma? Maybe we'd better take the gag off and let her open it for us. She wrote down the combination, didn't she? She couldn't talk it any better than she could write it. Now, keep quiet a minute. Oh, this tip better be good, Pete. It's good. Nice old lady, afraid of the bad, bad bank. Keeps all her jewels and money nice and safe at home. It's open. Look at this. What rocks in the dough? 20s, 50s, C-notes. Ah, must be 15, 20 grand there. Shove it in the briefcase. Hey, what about her? We just can't leave her like she is. No, because if somebody took that gag off, she could talk. Only one way to stop that. Why didn't you muffle that with a pillar? People else, they get the backfire. Come on, let's get going. Car okay? Sure, there it is. Hey, Pete, the other way, somebody running. A cop. You go ahead, get the car started. Stay where you are, copper. They're gone. Take the corner. You crazy. I made him duck into a doorway, didn't I? Suppose the car hadn't started right away. You were right under that street light without a hat. Why didn't you leave your picture? We'll be 500 miles from here by morning. He wasn't close enough to get our license number. He might have been close enough to see what state we're from. If he asked for mug shots, you got a record. He might just identify then you. Then he'll be making a mistake. You taught me a trick when we were in the pen together. Remember, Boland? Never risk 10 years of the electric chair when you can get away for six months. And that little hall's worth six months, ain't it? Yeah. It'll work for me when I pull that armored car sticker. Yeah. And it'll work for me. It'll work just fine. What time is it? Uh, 12.20. When we get home, we'll get the newspapers. See if our DA has any little crimes kicking around unsolved. Anything nice and simple committed around uh, midnight tonight. <laughs> we might save Mr. Garrett a lot of work. <laughs> Hello, Miss Miller. Oh, Mr. Garrett. How did it go? <laughs> I wish I knew. You know how I feel about speaking at luncheons. I hate... Oh, this gentleman has been waiting for you since 11 o'clock. I told him you'd be back late. Oh, he... I'm, I'm sorry. I know you, don't I? Yes, sir. I'm afraid you do. My name's Pete Grable. Oh, yes. I remember. Burglary, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Three years ago. I did six months. And what can I do for you, Pete? Well, I'm in trouble again, Mr. Garrett. Come into my office. Thanks. Oh, no calls for a while, please, Miss Miller. Unless they're urgent. Yes, sir. Switch the routine stuff to Burton. Oh, and ask Harrington to come up when he's finished at the lab. All right, Mr. Garrett. 
Sit down, Pete. Thanks. Tell me about it. Well, I... I don't know where to begin. Uh, after I did time on that rap... Well, I wanted to straighten myself out. I tried. I got a job. Even went to night school. I, I guess I wasn't very good at working, though. I got fired. I've been bumming around for a few months. Broke. Uh, well, I, I, I guess I better give it to you straight. Night before last, about 11.30, I guess, I was out walking. I, I passed this hardware store... And the hardware store on Southern Boulevard and Finch Street? Yes, sir. I guess you know what comes next. I went around the back, broke in. There was $94.62 in the cash register, and I took it. Why, Pete? Why after doing time before? I don't know. I've been asking myself the same question all day, yesterday and the day. The heat must have gotten me or something. I was crazy. You still have the money? No. I played big shot and spent it. Well, I'm glad you walked in here by yourself, Pete. You were playing it tough the last time when we had to catch you and bring you in. Well, you can hang it on me good this time, Mr. Garrett. I had a chance and I blew it. I'll deserve everything I get. Well, what you'll get will be up to the judge, Pete. But the fact that you came in here is going to weigh in your favor. If I recommend a short sentence and probation, will you promise me to work out the money you stole, make restitution? Oh, Mr. Garrett... I'd do anything for a break like that. I'll pay back every dime. All right. Miss Miller? Yes, sir. Come in, please. Bring your book. I want you to take a statement. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, Harrington said he'd be here in a couple of minutes. Good. Take this. Head it with a date and location. Statement of Peter Grable, re the burglary of the Amalgamated Hardware Company at 1154 Southern Boulevard, this city. I'll fill in the date. The date before yesterday. Between 11 and 11.30 p.m. Got it? Yes, sir. Now, Pete, do you make the statement you're about to make with the full understanding that it will be used against you as evidence? I do. Do you do so of your own free will without coercion or other undue influence of force? I do. All right, Pete. Tell us in your own words just what happened. Well, at uh, 11.30 Thursday night... Night before last, I was... Oh, Chief, I... Uh... Oh. oh, excuse me. I, I didn't know you had anybody in there. It's all right, honey. Didn't come in. And this is Pete Grable. Yeah, I remember him. Sit down. He's given us a voluntary confession on the amalgamated hardware burglary. Go ahead, Pete. Oh, uh, well, where was I now? At 11.30 Thursday night, night before last, oh, I was... Oh, yeah. Um, I was walking past the store. I went into the alley leading around to the back... I jimmied my way in. I stole $94.62 from the cash register. I spent it, and I can't give it back. That's all. Are you prepared to sign this statement after it's typed? Yes, sir. Good. All right, Miss Miller. Type it up. Have Kincaid take him over to the county jail. You'll have to be held, Pete, until bail is set. It won't be too long. I'll have you arraigned Monday morning. Thank you. Hey, just a minute, Pete. Don't you think I'd better go out there with him, Chief, until Kincaid comes up? Oh, I don't think that'll be necessary, Harrington. He came in voluntarily. You're not going to run, are you, Pete? No, sir. Go ahead. What about those parking lot robberies? You got anything? Nope, not yet. The stuff the lad had is no good. No, keep on it. Better watch the ballparks, bowling alleys, fight stadiums. Any place night parking is heavy. Yeah. Uh, Chief, um, yeah? you know, I like to see a guy get a break if he rates it. But this Pete Grable, he was a tough monkey. We got nothing at all on that amalgamated hardware job, but all of a sudden he walks in here like a lamb. Bothers me. I know. It's been bothering me, too. I thought you were sold on him. He wants me to be sold on him. Let him walk around a while before we see what he's got on his mind. While he's walking, he's got a chance to run. He's also got a chance to trip. Yeah, I see what you mean. Uh, you want me to check on him? Home, family? No, not until he's arraigned and makes bail. Why wait until then? Because then it could be a friendly visit to, oh, somebody we're sold on. Let's see if that confession is ready yet. I assume will that be ready, Miss Miller? Just a few more lines. No, you take it over to the jail and have him sign it, Harrington, and be friendly. Thank you. 
No, Peter hasn't been home yet. I cooked dinner for him and I had to throw it all out. Even had to borrow the money to make it for him. And your son's bail was $500, Mrs. Grable. Where did you borrow that? $500. Now, where would I ever get my hands on that much money? Uh, you mean you didn't put up the money? You're not the one who sprung him? I didn't even know where he was. Until I got a note from him saying he'd be let out this morning. For me to bring him a razor and his best suit of clothes. I see. Do you know who did arrange for his release? Was it his father or your husband? His father's been dead since Peter was 15 years old. You don't know where Peter is now? He didn't come home at all after he was released this morning? No. I waited for him outside the prison. But he said he had to go someplace. He'd see me later. So I got on the trolley car and came to see that there'd be a good meal on the table for him. The probation officer will be checking on him before he's sentenced, Mrs. Grable. It's after 10 p.m. If he's keeping late hours, it won't help him. I tried to get him to come home with me. Maybe we can find him and bring him home for you, if you can give us some idea of where he hangs out. Perhaps the name and addresses of some of his friends. He never tells me about his friends. But you know, there's a place he must go to a lot. I'm, I'm always finding these matchbooks in his clothes. Uh, Boland's Bonanza, it says on them. Uh, with a picture of a man and a woman dancing, you see? Name ring a bell with you, Harrington? Yeah, yeah. It's a dance hall out the south side. No, I'm not familiar with him. Yeah, and you'd be familiar with the owner if you saw him. Boland? Ray Boland. You set him up twice for last night. Well, how did an ex-con get a permit to run a dance hall? We never had him on a felony. Oh, I remember now. Petty larceny both times. Misdemeanor convictions wouldn't stop him from getting a dance hall license. You remember when it was we last sent him away? Yeah, uh, two, uh, uh no, no, uh, three years ago. He pulled six months. Oh, that means he and Peter Grable were in prison at the same time. They might even have been cellmates. Yeah, but what's that got to do with this case? Just a small detail from Boland's last conviction that you may have forgotten. Hmm, what? He also walked into my office and confessed. Oh, and now Grable pulls the same stunt. Why? They can't like prison. Maybe they like it better than something else. What? That's what we're going to find out. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the man who confessed, here is an important message from my sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A man had walked into my office and confessed to a crime of burglary involving less than $100. His family had no money, but somebody posted $500 bail for him. He was certain to go to jail, but he seemed happy about it. It didn't add up. Harrington and I headed for Boland's Bonanza, a dance hall on the south side. I ought to have two bands, Boland, like the uptown joints. Continuous dancing. People don't like to sitting around, do they, Dolly? Look. When you wake diamond dance joints like I have, you're happy to hear the horn stop. <laughs> you see, Pete? Besides, it's a warm night. Give the concessions a chance to do a little business. I make money there, too, you know. <laughs> yeah, and if this don't work, there are other ways, huh? You ought to know, boy. Hey, uh, you didn't tell me how to go with the DA. A oh, breeze. You should have seen it. <laughs> hey, bring it up. Keep quiet. Honey. Those two guys coming across the floor. Garrett, the DA, and that shadow of his, Harrington. Don't move now. They've seen us. It'll look funny if you go. Good evening, Pete. Oh, hello, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Harrington. Uh, I'd like you both to meet uh, Miss Dolly Weeks. Miss Weeks? Miss How Weeks. do you do? And uh, this is Ray Boland. He owns the place. I believe we've met Mr. Boland before. So fast. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm glad you're meeting at my place this time, instead of yours. Oh, a band's been off the stand too long. Customers getting restless. I'd better go outside and hurt them in. Well, nice to see you gentlemen again. Bye. Hello. Hello. Right. Uh, yeah, you better go looking for your date, Dolly. 
or they'll think you got lost. Huh? Oh, oh yeah. Um, excuse me, please. Don't you think you should be leaving too, Pete? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, I didn't realize it was so late. Uh, good night. Night. Oh, Pete. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, Mr. Harrington. Uh, how did you jimmy your way into the hardware store? Through a back door or a window? What difference does it make? Well, it might make a difference in court. Nothing can make any difference in court, Mr. Garrett. I ain't fighting the case. You've got to make confession. Yeah. Yeah, I guess you're right. Skip it. Oh. Night. We can get to the parking lot through the back door. Okay. What was that question all about, Harrington? About whether he jimmied a door or a window? Oh, just something I remembered. The bagel again entry by cutting out a ventilator screen with wire clippers. For a man who says he robbed the store, he doesn't seem to know too much about the details, does he? If you ask me, he never saw the inside of that hardware store. His confession is a phony. I know that. But why? Oh, a psycho. We get him every day, don't we? Trying to make people think they're tough or big shots. Or... He's no psycho, Harrington. At least not that kind. There's another reason. There was another reason when Boland did it three years ago, too. He had all the... Hey, Chief, look. Yes, Miss Weeks. The girl we just saw with Pete. Hey, that's quite a car she's got. About 5,000 bucks on wheels. Yes, and she's no society debutante. Come on. You want to follow her? Yes. She turned right, going out. Yeah, I saw her. There. Parked just past the entrance to the dance hall. I'm just driving past her. Don't stop until you get to the end of the street. Dark area under those trees is all right. Okay. What's she waiting there for? See for yourself. Hmm, sure. Little Petey boy. Should I tag them when they go past? No, I'll just get the license number. Get it? Yep. I had jot it down. Ah, now what? Take me home. We've got a lot of work to do tomorrow. Yes, Miss Miller? Harrington's on extension one, sir. Okay, put him on. Hello, Harrington. Hello, Chief. I got a rundown on that registration. Now, who owns the car? It belongs to the Dolly Weeks dame, all right. She bought it last Saturday. 4652 bucks cash. Does she have a record? No, but she doesn't have any way of earning that kind of money either. I just got all the reports from the burglary detail on that job at Amalgamated. You were right about the burglar gaining entry through the ventilator screen. There's something else that doesn't fit, too. Well, uh, what? Pete confessed to stealing $94.62. Yeah? Store owner's statement lists the amount stolen at $84.62. That's funny. I've got an idea about it. I'll have it worked out by the time you get up here. I'll be there in a minute. Wait a minute. No, no. Before you come up, pull the record bureau files on both Bolin and Pete. Everything we've got on them. Bring them with you. Okay, Chief. Be up as fast as I can. Good. Miss Miller? Yes, sir. You get those back issues of the newspapers from last Friday? Yes, sir. I just finished going through them, but there's only one small item on the amalgamated hardware burglary. Well, bring it in. It was on page nine of the post transcript, Miss Garrett. It's only one paragraph. Well, let me see. Burglar broke in through the rear of the store. Look to the cash register of $94.62. Now, that's it, all right. That's what? Well, that's where Pete Grable got his information and his confession. Only the information happens to be wrong. Get Harrington again in the record room. Tell him to wait for me there. I'm on my way down. Yes, sir. Shirt on. 
Who is it? It's Pete. Let me in quick. I tried to phone you. I was busy. I take it out the hook when I'm sleeping. What's the idea of getting me up so early? I think we're getting hot, that's why. Did you goof up on something? It's that gumshoe Harrington from the DA's office. He's been checking on Dolly. Well, what's that to get an uproar about? They saw you to get her, that's all. Well, they... They saw the car, too. What car? I gave Dolly Doe to buy a new car. With hot money less than a week after a killing? Well, I thought it'd be safe in her name. You're... Goodbye, Pete. What do you mean, Bowen? I mean goodbye. I'm taking myself a vacation to South America. From now on, I don't know you. Goodbye, Pete. I ought to... You pull that gun on me and you'll really be cooked. And you got a chance. Be smart. Take it. That's the only reason I'm leaving you alive. office. Miss Miller, this is Mr. Garrett calling from the record room. I want you to get some more newspapers for me. Yes, sir. Which ones? Out-of-town papers from all surrounding states. Last Friday and Saturday editions. Get the whole staff together and comb them page by page. I want a list of all major crimes committed in those cities last Thursday night, and I want it within an hour. Yes, sir, Mr. Garrett. I'll get right on it. What's the idea of that, Chief? What are you after? I'll tell you what I'm after. Look at this record on Bolin. His confession about stealing a car radio? Yes, a car radio. He does six months in jail for taking something worth less than $50. Then two weeks after his release, he buys a dance hall for $20,000, spends another ten decorating. Oh? What are you driving at? Now, oh, look at this FBI teletype. Received by us while Bolin was doing time. Uh, request all available information, Ray Bolin, your county. Mugshot selected as possible suspect, armored car robbery, state capital. Not of October 3rd or last. October 3rd. Hey, that's the same night he confessed to stealing the car radio. Sure. And the record bureau wired back that he was serving time for an offense committed at the same time, the same night, more than 200 miles away. We provided him with an alibi. And now, Grable is afraid he was seen on some job and he's pulling the same stunt. Only this time it isn't going to work. Have a squad pick up Dolly Weeks for questioning. Then get up to the office and let's help with those newspapers. Uh, oh, Mr. Garrett and Mr. Harrington. Your son home, Mrs. Grable? Oh, why, yes, he came home this morning. Says he's going to stay. I can watch over him now and he'll give you no more trouble. He's really not a bad one, you know. Must have been the company he was keeping. We'd like to see him, Mrs. Grable. Well, he's in his room. I'll call him. Uh, we'll see him in there if you don't mind. Which room is it? The second door. What? Oh, Mr. Garrett, Harrington. I, I was just getting dressed to come and see you. Were you, Pete? Yeah. I... Uh, Yes, I, I guess I was confused the day I gave you that statement on the hardware store. You see, I, um, I, I really went in through a ventilator screen, and, and, and then, too, I, I told you the wrong amount on the money. We know you did. We also know that you stopped in the hardware store a couple of hours ago and bought a wrench and spent ten minutes asking the storekeeper about the burglary. You see, we've been doing a little checking, too. The police at Harrisburg are looking for two men who robbed and murdered a wealthy old woman. You know anything about it? Go ahead, Pete. Go ahead. If the gun's in there, go for it. Or do you only use it on old ladies? It's Bolin. The whole idea was Bolin's not mine. I'm here, ain't I? He's running away. Not far. The police will be waiting for his plane when it lands at Dallas. And Dolly is waiting for you, downtown at my office. Please, Mr. Garrett, you gotta give me a break. I'll give you a break, Pete. The only kind of a break the law permits. What's that? The same kind of a break you gave that old lady in Harrisburg.
This is David Bryan. I hope you enjoy this case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here's the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Pete Grable, Roy Bolin, and Dolly Weeks were extradited to the county where the brutal murder had been committed. Grable and Bolin were convicted in the first degree and executed. Dolly Weeks is now serving sentence on a charge of being an accessory after the fact and receiving stolen property. Now, this is David Bryan inviting you to join us when we present our next case based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lord. (laughs) 